Hey, and welcome to another episode of Redeeming Truth. This one, as uh, with many of the other episodes, is not controversial at all. Uh, we are going to talk about some tough questions, hard questions, really for faith healers. And the reason for that is because now is as good a time as ever to talk about things that matter, and that is truth, and that's the gospel. So some of the things that are hitting the news revolve around Bethel Church closing their Supernatural School of Ministry. Paula White, who's uh, one of the advisors, the, the spiritual advisor to President Trump, uh, was on Twitter today telling people to give $9 or uh, I think one, $91 as well. So Shy Lin, really great rapper and a wonderful brother in Christ, had posted, and he, he posted this above Paula White's tweet, for as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Romans 2.24. Mm-hmm. That's really the driver behind an episode like this. Right now, more than ever, people are watching Christians. They're watching the church and they are observing our witness. If our witness is faith healers who claim to be able to eradicate disease, but then they shut down their operation, and spiritual advisors to the White House administration who pilfer certain amounts or dollar amounts and try to convince people to give, what does that say about our witness? One particular news organization uh, broadcasted the story about Bethel shutting down and quoted them as saying, the good news without power is not good news. In other words, the gospel is not even anything without Mm -hmm. signs and wonders. Paul was glad that his preaching wasn't with persuasive words, but demonstration of power. And one of our goals would be that every student could know how to cast out demons, heal the sick, and preach the gospel. And here's the statement uh, from Bethel. Though we believe in a God who actively heals today, students are not being encouraged to visit healthcare settings at this time, and moreover, are taught that even under normal circumstances, they have to receive permission from both the facility and the individual before engaging in prayer. So, first of all, we would commend obeying the government. If you don't have permission to do this, great. But I want to talk more about it, what it means to have the gift of healing, and I want you guys to chime in on some really important aspects, because like Romans 2 tells us, the name of God is often blasphemed when faith healers say, hey, I can get this thing right out of here in no time. Watch what I can do. And then they can't. So, Kyle, first with you, speak to the dangers of not saying anything right now, because the idea is, hey, this is really unloving. What are you guys doing? This is the worst time to talk about it. How insensitive of you. What's the danger with letting the foot off the gas, turning a blind eye and saying, you know, let's not touch on that. Um, you know, people may think we're being a little hard and, and they might be really upset with us. What are the dangers with laying off when truth is on the line? Sure, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we may be told in this day and age that we need to unite together as a country and, you know, have a common mission of, you know, protecting the weak and this kind of thing. And that, that is true. But as Christians, our most important mission is to be heralds of God's truth. Amen. And God's truth speaks to this. And so if we neglect to speak about it, especially when it's pertinent, then we're neglecting to speak God's truth in its entirety. Mm. One of the things we've covenanted to do at Redeemer is to always counsel from the scriptures and the whole counsel of God's word. So where I'd go is in 2 Peter 2. And the first few verses of 2 Peter 2 say this. It says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. And we know we've seen those destructive heresies, these ontological, Christological heresies that redefine Jesus, that redefine his mission. And then it says, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. uh, And many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed, just like we were talking about from Romans. So not only is God's name blasphemed, the truth of his word is blasphemed when they claim gifts that God has not given them, when they're, like you use the word, pilfering people of their money. We know Second Peter goes on to talk about their motivation, which is money, which is fame, and, and then they flee when, when the truth is exposed. So the danger of not talking about this now is that this is what we're seeing. We need to expose them for what they are and contrast them to the truth of God's Word and lead people to that truth. That's a good point. And, you know, you touched on this just now really helpfully, and and even the the news reporting would back this up, by the way. Not that the Bible needs a news story to back it up, but it's fascinating to me how much this this hits the nail on the head. You talk about having not a lot of moral, no moral boundaries. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they are greedy. They are trying to get money. They're trying to exploit people. Uh, the article goes on to explain, this is a Sacramento news uh, outlet, two Bethel students had approached a woman in the emergency room at Mercy Medical Center in Reading, and they said they're going to pray for people here and put Jesus in their hearts and that this would heal us all and that they didn't need to stay in the ER any longer, that they could go home. Those are, that's an exact quote. The woman had to file a complaint with the hospital saying that one of the students had touched her five-year-old without her consent, which is probably just laying, trying to lay hands on them. Uh, you can try to look as moral as you, you can. You can try to look as rich as you can, look as spiritual as you can. But in the end, you, you either can do what you say you can do or you can't. Yeah, I mean, Second Peter 2 goes on to say, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Right. We're told exactly what they're doing, and we need to be telling other people exactly what they're doing. Absolutely. So now time is as good a time as ever to put truth in front of people. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Dale, the accusation, of course, to you, not to any of us, this is all on you. Uh, <laughs> you are on, this is unloving. This isn't love. What are you doing? This is, this is so petty. It's immature. You're a Pharisee. Why are you talking about this right now? How unloving is you, uh, uh, of you to do this? Speak to the individual who's thinking, this is horrific and unloving. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I've heard that there have been some comments on our videos that people are saying that about us. Here and there. I mean, we don't read those comments, so I wouldn't know. But um, here, here's what I would say to that. The most loving thing I can do for anybody is to tell them the truth. Amen. Amen. I, I can't think of a more loving thing to do than to warn people of false teaching, false doctrine, and something that's going to lead somebody astray. Hmm. But I would be... I would be violating my own conscience if I did not step forward. So as um, we've been accused of being fundamentalists, we've been accused of having bad motives and wanting to speak about this issue and issues like this. But I, I'm just going to read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The goal of our instruction is love Amen. from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Mm. That's why we're talking about it. We are doing the most loving thing that we could ever do by telling people the truth about what the scripture says and how the scripture warns against this kind of bad theology and even heresy. Mm. Amen. Amen. I, I would plead with you. Uh, if you're watching and you're caught on the fence, you say, ah, I don't know about all this, or why are you doing that? Or maybe you're an enthusiast for this kind of thing. I would just say during times like these, can we please just define reality? Can we face it together? Can we admit that if you had the gift of healing and if you were doing things out of a heart of love and wanting to see people saved and set free and seen, wouldn't you just go do it? Or couldn't you do it if you say you could? Uh, if I say I've got the greatest message on earth and it's the gospel and there's power in it, I already know what to do unleash that and watch as people get saved. I can guarantee, I don't know if everyone's going to get saved. I don't know if everyone's going to respond lovingly or happily, but I can guarantee if you spend your life and we spend our days unleashing the power of the gospel, something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so that is a guarantee. Uh, we need to be able to define reality and not deny it. And I would also ask that we demand uh, of those who put themselves up on some pedestal, or at least put themselves on a platform to be voices of truth and sources of power, that they answer the bell when it's time to answer the bell. Mm. If you say you have the solution, if you say you have the cure, then the most hateful thing you could do is withhold that. Mm. The most hateful thing you could do is say you could do something and then not. If you got it, do it. That's what we need. Those are the hard questions we should be asking of self-appointed faith healers. Now, John, I want to do this because I think it's helpful to, to, to see what really somebody logical would say or do if they had the gift. So let's play a little game, role play almost. If you had the gift of healing or if I had the gift of healing. So we'll start that off. If, if you had the gift of healing, what would you do? Well, the first thing I wouldn't do is close down my healing services, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't do that. Wouldn't encourage uh, my other friends who have the same gift to do the same thing. And frankly, I wouldn't even go to hospitals. I wouldn't go to um, nursing homes. I wouldn't go to ICUs. I'd go to Washington, D.C. I mean, if we're going right. to demonstrate <laughs> the power of the gospel, mm. yeah. I'm going to bring sick people with me. I'm going to ask for, I'm going to demand a meeting with President Trump. 
Yeah. I'm going to heal people right in front of him. And I'm going to say, put me on that, put me on that, uh, that press conference. Yeah. I, I, I have the real message. Amen. And I'm going to preach, I'm going to tell the whole world that the, that the gospel is true. And I'm going to heal people right in front of them. I'm going to have doctors standing right there who are ready to test them before. Yes, they have COVID-19 and test them right after. No, they don't. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be saying everybody, I'm going to be giving mass healing out through the television to, to millions. None of that's happening. And th- this, that's why we're doing this. Because yep. these men and these women are frauds. Mm. They are absolute frauds. They're making millions of dollars. And, and people are going to say, you're just trying to build your ministry on their backs. No, absolutely not. We're trying to protect our people from them. Amen. Amen. Because their message is spreading all over the world. And we have to protect them. And so the fact that they aren't dressing like Jesus did hasn't stopped it. The, the fact that their message is not biblical hasn't stopped it. The fact that logically, the idea that if you give me $10, God will give you 1000 that they're not giving all their money away mm-hmm. so that they would get a hundredfold blessing. Yeah. Again, it's just like, logically it doesn't make sense. And now we're saying now is your perfect moment. An international crisis, pandemic. Amen. Show us that we are wrong. Show us that we're the Pharisees Mm. right now. Get in front of everybody and say, I'm calling out all the Pharisees like us. Call us out and show us what you can do. Mm. You're not going to do it because you can't. Amen. Mm. I I would, I want to be wrong. I want to, I want us to be wrong. I would, I would, you know, eat my socks to be wrong on this, just Amen. whatever it takes. People would get healed. Uh, presidential administrations would be transformed. Mm. Countries overturned. The whole world saved and rescued and shown what our God can do. So I completely agree. I want to be wrong. And unfortunately, we aren't because the Bible's not. And that's really where, what backs this. Uh, what, what really this comes down to is when the pressure is on, what is inside of people comes out. And when the pressure is on for faith healers and those who propagate a false gospel, all the other times when we don't have COVID-19 making the world go crazy, uh, we don't really notice it. But right now when the pressure is on, what is inside is coming out. And guess what? Like John said, nothing is inside of there. There's nothing you should be chasing. So where does all this go? We're not ending the episode right now. We're going to take about two more minutes. There are applications here. We want something for you, not from you. If you unsubscribe or never watch another video or never come to our church, that's okay. We gave you the truth and we want to give you the truth and serve you well. I don't care if another person subscribes or we get any more followers. The goal of our instruction is not to gain an audience. The goal of our instruction is love. So here are four simple applications. Number one, realize that they are liars. Plain and simple, realize that they're liars. They are. That's going to be a tough truth for some of you to swallow. Admit it, realize it, and move on. It's worse than that, though, Costi. It's Mm. worse than that they're liars. They will also tell you it's your fault. When something doesn't come true, when you're not healed of something, they'll look at you and say it's your fault. You don't have enough faith. So it's worse than liars. Maybe the point then, realize they're predators. Realize they're predators. Uh, They're abusers. That's what they are. Number two, recognize that God has made truth known. He's made it clear for you. He loves you so much that you happen to watch this video and he delivered this at this point in time in your life, at this perfect season, he has appointed the time, the minute, the hour, the second that you would know the truth. So realize that he loves you and he's offered you the truth. Number three, run to a biblical church. This is fantastic in in kind of the worst sense potentially weeks and weeks of lockdown, so you don't get to go and worship normally like you would. We would think that's a terrible thing. However, it could be providential for some of you watching. This is the perfect time to seek the Lord, be in His Word, get resourced, experience the true love of God through the truth, and then when everyone's released again from these quarantines and whatnot, and we can go back out again, you run to a biblical church, and we'll have an episode coming uh, either the next one or the one after that of how to find a biblical church, Mm -hmm. but run to a biblical church. And number four, remember to reach others. That's why we do this. We want to reach others. Uh, You are going to experience a season of frustration, no doubt. Some of these people and different shows and whatnot and pastors, we can all get sucked into this a little while, just sitting throwing stones as though that was the end. No. All of this is a means to an end. It's to reach people. So now that you've heard the truth, and if the Lord opens your eyes to the truth, reach out to somebody, share the video, ask the hard questions, and just turn to Christ. It's that simple. 
Uh, you guys have any other wisdom on this particular topic to add during a time like this? Yeah, shouldn't it be obvious that they're frauds when they put glasses on to read things? It's a fair question. Like, it really is. Or have on. heart conditions or right. have to go for normal surgeries. Um, right. I, you could add a, a whole bunch of things into that equation. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I would say get really, really familiar with Second Peter and with Jude. Because That's those good. two books were written yeah. so that we could identify false teachers. And Second Peter 2 in particular, I read the first bit. You start to read the rest of this, and it describes these people as dangerous, dangerous predators, like you said. Things like waterless springs, uh, you know, clouds, uh, clouds driven around by the storm. And this, this, an these analogies that the Bible uses, these are dangerous things. And mm. an agrarian society would have destroyed the crop, yep. would have destroyed the financial year very much similar to what we're facing in these next coming months. You know, they promise them uh, freedom, uh, but they themselves are slaves to corruption. These are bad things. So read it, get familiar with it so that you can teach yourself how to identify false teachers. Amen. Amen. Uh, so back to the original verse we read, Romans 2, 24, the name of God is being blasphemed among the Gentiles mm. because of you, people who spread false doctrine, false teaching, misrepresent Christ. And let's go one layer deeper to finish. And this is a heavy one. People are going to die because of coronavirus. They're dying anyway, but they're going to die. Life is about to get really, really hard for a lot of us. It already is. So what do we have to lose at this point, even more so than ever? Give people the truth. Amen. You might have friends and family, people you love, who are on their last leg or, or, or get COVID-19. Give people the truth. Uh, Go down, if you will, wielding the truth, spreading the truth. Um, if these are dark days and they're beginning of darker ones, live loud and proud. Be a light for Christ. Uh, so we encourage you to ask more questions and watch more episodes as time allows. And we are praying for you during this very difficult season, hoping and trusting in the Lord. And that truth, as always, and we know it will, will prevail.